Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 41 to 50 for the Certified Ethical Hacker V13 exam. Let's begin. Bill is a network administrator. He wants to eliminate unencrypted traffic inside his company's network. He decides to set up a span port and capture all traffic to the data center. He immediately discovers unencrypted traffic in port UDP 161. What protocol is this port using and how can he secure that traffic? The correct answer is B, SNMP, and he should change it to SNMPv3. UDP port 161 is used by SNMP. Versions 1 and 2C of SNMP transmit data in plain text, including community strings, which are essentially passwords. To secure SNMP traffic, SNMPv3 should be used, as it supports authentication and encryption. Why the other options are incorrect? A. RPC and the best practice is to disable RPC completely. RPC typically uses different ports and is not related to UDP 161. C. SNMP and he should change it to SNMPv2, which is encrypted. SNMPv2 does not provide encryption. It still transmits data in plain text, similar to SNMPv1. D. It is not necessary to perform any actions, as SNMP is not carrying important information. SNMP can carry critical network configuration and monitoring data, and leaving it unencrypted is a security risk. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Bob was recently hired by a medical company after it experienced a major cybersecurity breach. Many patients are complaining that their personal medical records are fully exposed on the internet, and someone can find them with a simple Google search. Bob's boss is very worried because of regulations that protect those data. Which of the following regulations is mostly violated? The correct answer is D. HIPPA PHI. The HIPAA protects PHI. Since the breach involves medical records being exposed online, this is a clear violation of HIPAA which mandates the privacy and security of individuals' health data. Why the other options are incorrect? A. PCIDSS PCIDSS relates to payment card data, not medical records. B. PII While medical records include PII, the specific regulation violated in this context is HIPAA, which is designed for healthcare data. C. ISO 27002 this is a general best practices standard for information security management, not a law or regulation. It's helpful, but not a specific regulatory requirement being violated. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Infecting a system with malware and using phishing to gain credentials to a system or web application are examples of which phase of the ethical hacking methodology. The correct answer is B. Gaining access. The gaining access phase involves exploiting vulnerabilities to break into systems or applications. Using malware or phishing to steal credentials are both methods used to actually obtain unauthorized access, which aligns directly with this phase. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Scanning. This phase involves identifying live hosts, open ports, and vulnerabilities, but not exploiting them. B. Maintaining access. This comes after gaining access and involves setting up backdoors or persistence to retain control. D. Reconnaissance This is the first phase, involving passive information gathering without interacting with the target system directly. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Larry, a security professional in an organization, has noticed some abnormalities in the user accounts on a web server. To thwart Evolmi attacks, he decided to harden the security of the web server by adopting a few countermeasures to secure the accounts on the web server. Which of the following countermeasures must Larry implement to secure the user accounts on the web server? The correct answer is B. Limit the administrator or root level access to the minimum number of users. Limiting administrator or root level access reduces the attack surface by ensuring that only trusted individuals have high level privileges. This is a key security hardening practice to protect user accounts and prevent privilege escalation or misuse. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Retain all unused modules and application extensions. 
Unused components can introduce vulnerabilities. Best practice is to remove, not retain, unnecessary modules. C. Enable all non-interactive accounts that should exist but do not require interactive login. These accounts should typically be disabled from interactive login, not enabled. D. Enable unused default user accounts created during the installation of an OS. Default accounts are often targeted by attackers. They should be disabled or removed if unused. Therefore, the correct answer is B. There are multiple cloud deployment options depending on how isolated a customer's resources are from those of other customers. Shared environments share the costs and allow each customer to enjoy lower operations expenses. One solution is for a customer to join with a group of users or organizations to share a cloud environment. What is this cloud deployment option called? The correct answer is B. Community. A community cloud is a cloud deployment model where several organizations with similar requirements share a cloud infrastructure. It provides a balance between cost savings and privacy, offering more isolation than public cloud while still being cost effective through shared use. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Private. A private cloud is dedicated to a single organization, offering maximum control and isolation, but higher cost. C. Public. A public cloud is open to the general public and shared widely, not limited to a group with common interests or needs. D. Hybrid. A hybrid cloud combines two or more cloud models to allow data and applications to be shared between them. It's not focused on a shared group structure. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Alan, a professional pen tester, was hired by Expert Tech Solutions to perform an attack simulation on the organization's network resources. To perform the attack, he took advantage of the NetBIOS API and targeted the NetBIOS service. By enumerating NetBIOS, he found that port 139 was open and could see the resources that could be accessed or viewed on a remote system. He came across many NetBIOS codes during enumeration, identified the NetBIOS code used for obtaining the messenger service running for the logged in user. The correct answer is C03. The NetBIOS suffix 03 is used to identify the messenger service for the logged in user. It allows sending messages to users via the net send command or similar mechanisms. Why the other options are incorrect? A. 00. This represents the host name or workstation service. B. 20. This is used for the file server service, indicating shared resources like files and printers. D. 1B. This identifies the domain master browser, typically found on domain controllers. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Don, a student, came across a gaming app in a third-party app store and installed it. Subsequently, all the legitimate apps in his smartphone were replaced by deceptive applications that appeared legitimate. He also received many advertisements on his smartphone after installing the app. What is the attack performed on Don in the above scenario? The correct answer is D. Agent Smith attack. The Agent Smith attack involves a malicious app that replaces legitimate apps with malicious versions without the user's knowledge, while still preserving the original appearance. It also typically bombards the user with ads and can steal data or spy on activity. Why the other options are incorrect? A. SIM card attack. This involves manipulating the SIM card to intercept calls or messages, not replacing apps or showing ads. B. Clickjacking. This tricks users into clicking on something different from what they perceive, often by overlaying invisible elements. It doesn't replace apps. C. SMS phishing attack. This involves sending malicious links via SMS to steal information, not silently replacing apps or injecting ads after installation. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Samuel, a security administrator, is assessing the configuration of a web server. He noticed that the server permits SSL v2 connections, and the same private key certificate is used on a different server that allows SSL v2 connections. This vulnerability makes the web server vulnerable to attacks as the SSL v2 server can leak key information. Which of the following attacks can be performed by exploiting the above vulnerability? The correct answer is 
B. Drown attack. The drown attack exploits servers that support SSL v2, a deprecated and insecure protocol. If a server reuses the same private key on both a secure and an SSL v2 enabled server, attackers can exploit the SSL v2 weakness to decrypt TLS connections. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Padding Oracle Attack this targets weaknesses in padding validation in cryptographic algorithms like AES in CBC mode, not SSL v2 specifically. C. DUHK attack. DUHK targets systems using specific vulnerable random number generators, not SSL v2. D. Side channel attack. These involve exploiting physical characteristics, not protocol weaknesses like SSL v2. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Clark, a professional hacker, was hired by an organization to gather sensitive information about his competitors surreptitiously. Clark gathers the server IP address of the target organization using who is footprinting. Then, he entered the server IP address as an input to an online tool to retrieve information such as the network range of the target organization and to identify the network topology and operating system used in the network. What is the online tool employed by Clark in the above scenario? The correct answer is C. RIN. RIN is used to obtain IP address registration information, including network range, organization details, and sometimes hints about network topology. It's often used in who is footprinting and IP reconnaissance. Why the other options are incorrect? A. DuckDuckGo. This is a privacy-focused search engine, not used for IP or network analysis. B. AOL. This is a web portal and online service provider, not a tool for network footprinting. D. Baidu. This is a Chinese search engine, similar to Google. It's not used for who is or IP range lookups. Therefore, the correct answer is C. You are a penetration tester and are about to perform a scan on a specific server. The agreement that you signed with the client contains the following specific condition for the scan. The attacker must scan every port on the server several times using a set of spoofed source IP addresses. Suppose that you are using Nmap to perform this scan. What flag will you use to satisfy this requirement? The correct answer is D, the dash D flag. The dash D flag in Nmap is used for IP address spoofing. It allows the scan to appear as though it is coming from multiple spoofed IP addresses, helping to hide the true source of the scan. This fits the requirement to scan using a set of spoofed source IPs. Why the other options are incorrect? A. The dash G flag. This is used to specify a source port, not for spoofing source IPs. B. The dash A flag. This enables aggressive scanning, which includes OS detection, version detection, script scanning, and traceroute, but does not spoof IPs. C. The dash F flag. This is used to fragment packets, which may help evade firewalls, but does not spoof IP addresses. Therefore, the correct answer is D. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.